Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to show you how to blow out or winterize your in-ground sprinkler system. Now the first thing that you should do before anything else is test your system to ensure that all of the heads are firing properly. That way you'll know if there are any that are having any problems that could be addressed next spring. So the first thing we're going to do is test the system. If you'd like to skip this section and go right to blowing it out, I'm going to put the time at the bottom of the screen that you can skip ahead to. Now everybody's sprinkler timer is different. I happen to have an older one here which has these really handy dandy slide switches where I can just adjust how much time I want on each zone. I've already made a note of where all of them are. I'm going to move them all up to the two minute mark and then we're going to go ahead and uh, put the system on manual. I'm going to press manual and enter and in a moment my water meter should start running. There we go. You just go around and make sure all of your heads are firing. There's one there, one over there. My drip emitter is going. There's one down in the corner and one further in the bushes there which is also firing nicely. And over on the side, one here, one there, and one up against the fence in the corner. And the next zone has come on. So we have two heads and a third that's not working. So now we have to dig around and find it. it looks like it's been overgrown. It's somewhere in here. I'll find it soon. Here it is here. Sometimes you can force it up with a flat blade screwdriver, but I'm going to have to come back to this one. I know there's been some construction in the area and they have been on the curb so they may very well have damaged this one. And our next zone has come up. One is hitting the Halloween decorations. One here in the center and one over here. Those are doing fine. And our next zone is up over on the side here. One there and one against the fence. A little hard to see the way the sun is coming. There it is. And the next zone seems to be firing. A bit overgrown. This zone is almost never used. And now in the backyard we have one, two, and three. And our last zone, we have one here, one in the center. There's one over by the chairs that is hard to see, but it's there. And one over against the fence. I've now fixed that stubborn head on zone two. Just used a flat blade screwdriver to pry it up, and it popped right up. So. There's probably some dirt or something in there. I'll just keep an eye on it. We're shutting the system down for the winter now anyway, and if it continues to have problems in the spring, then we'll replace it. Okay, now that our test is complete, we're ready to winterize the system. The first step is to shut the water off. There's the valve. We'll turn that off. And now I'm gonna go back outside this red handle is for the sprinkler system. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. You'll see a little water came out. And that's going to open up. There will be a few dribbles out of it. But basically now we've introduced air. Now we'll go back to the inside. And this has a little drain cock there. So now I'm going to put a bucket up in there and open that up to drain out what I can. And you can see that's draining out nicely into the bucket. And once that's done draining, make sure that you close the petcock fully, otherwise you're going to have water coming inside. Hiding behind the basketball and under the vacuum is an air compressor. This is a Campbell Hausfeld oil lubricated 15 gallon air compressor. And there's an auxiliary tank in there for another 7 gallons, giving me a total of 22 gallons. You don't necessarily need that much air or you may need more air. Depends on the size of your property, how many zones you have in your system, and how long you want to wait between blowing out each zone. The more air you can have on hand, the better, and the faster the job is going to go. So invest in a decent compressor that's oil lubricated. 
It will pay you back in spades in the future. The next thing you're going to say is, okay, I have my compressor and my airline ready, but how do I connect it into the sprinkler system? And the answer is, you need to create an adapter. Now, I don't know why these things aren't just sold as a little adapter that'll slip in, but you have to make your own. Very, very simple and takes only five minutes. Here's your quick disconnect air fitting, and here's one that fits inside of that. This has female threads on the inside. This is exactly the same as this piece, but it has male threads. And this nipple part is sticking out on this end. Jam that into the end of a hose. This happens to be a washing machine fill hose, which is just the right diameter with a little persuasion, as you see, to fit on there. Finish off with a hose clamp and cut off so there's no sharp edges. Optional accessories would be an inline ball valve like this here, so you can turn the air on and off from the end of the hose where you are. Of course, you can just plug and unplug that, and that'll work just as well, but it's a lot more convenient with one of these inline valves. And you may also want to consider an inline regulator. I use this not to actually regulate the pressure. I like to feed the full pressure of the compressor through the system, and I've been doing that for about 10 years now without any trouble whatsoever. But I like to keep this down at this end of the hose so I have an idea of how much air is in the tank and when it's going to be about full, ready to blast the next zone. And once everything is all connected, you can see that we can send air through the line. So now we just hook this up to the spigot on the in-ground sprinklers. Okay, I've hooked our air to water hose up outside that valve was left on from before and we're ready to blast air so all we need to do is turn the zones on. I found it's much easier to do this electrically. There is a way you can open up your sprinkler control box and do it manually from in there but usually electrically is the easiest way. So all I'm going to do is go to zone 1 and put that to manual on. It will show it's on and we're ready to blast air. Remember, our water valve is off, so there's no water going in, and that valve won't be turned on till spring. Okay, everything's ready to go. Our air is hooked up. We're going to turn on the valve. And then we'll step back as the sprinklers are spraying out. Now we're going to start gearing air. There's one got air. That one's getting air. One down the way did. This one not yet. Now that's got air. And this is what we're looking to see, all this mist. We have mist down the line as well. We want to keep blowing air to get as much of this mist out as we can. You can't get every single drop, it's impossible. But you want to do the best job that you can. So we're going to keep spraying air through here. Now eventually we're going to find our pressure is too low to be useful, so we're going to shut off the valve and let the pressure build all the way back up and let the tank fill back up. Now our same zone is on and we're going to blast it again. Still a little mist coming out. This is why I do the zones twice. Because by the time I get all the air through there the second time, there's virtually nothing. Okay, we'll shut that off and let the tank refill. Now here's the reason we blow out the pipes. Imagine this hose is one of the pipes in the ground going to one of your sprinkler heads. In normal operation, this pipe is filled up completely with water. Well, in the wintertime, water is going to freeze. When water freezes, it expands. And it has nowhere to go but the pipe itself. And being that it's made out of plastic, that's what's going to burst. So by blowing out all of the water, we are leaving just a tiny bit maybe that much of water at the bottom of it but if that freezes it has the whole rest of the pipe to expand to before it would have to expand against the walls of the pipe and cause it to burst so we're trying to get rid of as much water as possible but like I said it's impossible to get all of it just do the best you can I've had a helper 
switch from zone one to zone two. So we've turned off one and turned on two, and now we're gonna turn on the air. And now we're blowing out the second zone. And the one that I fixed earlier has also popped up. Now we're getting the air come through, which is exactly what we want. Once again, it's all this mist that we're looking to get rid of as much as we can. If your head starts going down, that means you're running out of air. So now we need to let the tank recharge. Okay, second blast. And we have a little bit more mist. So we'll let this tank go through and that should close out zone two. Zone three. And zone three second blast. The humming noise you may hear in your system is completely normal when you're blowing it out. And now zone four. Zone four, second blast. Zone five. Zone five, second blast. That one looks pretty good. Zone six. Zone six, second blast. And this zone is looking pretty good too. And now zone seven. And zone seven, second blast. Okay, that was the second blast of the last zone. So now I've shut that zone off electrically. I disconnected my hose. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn off the rest of the valves. We'll just shut this one here. Okay, and shut this one like that. But don't stop here. Notice that this is just a female thread and that will attach to your garden hose. So blow the water out of your garden hose as well and that'll help prevent it from cracking and breaking over the winter. So now we have the air hose connected to the garden hose which is connected to another hose which goes over the fence because it serves the backyard. That hose goes through the hose reel and through all of this jungle to another hose which runs all the way back around and ends here. So everything is all connected together. We have about three, maybe even 400 feet of hose to blow out. You can do it all in one shot. You're not going to get all of the water out, especially if you leave it on the reel, but again, you're doing better than nothing.
Now we'll blast this one more time. And I'll let this dribble out for a few more minutes and that'll do it. The last thing we're going to do is move our control dial over to off. And now the system is off and will stay that way for the winter. Do not unplug your timer. It has a battery in there and if you unplug it the battery is likely going to be dead by the spring and you lose all of the programming of the times. So leave it plugged in, but just set to off. So that's all there is to blowing out your sprinkler system for the winter. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. That lets me know I did a good job making this video, and I can continue to provide them for you. Have a great day.